Okay, let's start it. Hello, guys. Welcome to um, Polkadot Insider Interview. We are doing an interview series about great contribution to, to Polkadot ecosystem. And we focus on, on business and growth where people bring more adoption users and also partnership to make Web3 be a better place. And joining, joining me today, um, so that with an Bay, founder and CEO of Aspen Network, an extremely uh, famous person right now with great contribution for the growth of the whole ecosystem from the very beginning. So how are you today? Are there any cool updates that all the crypto space should know about? Um, thank you very much for having me today. My name is Sota Watanabe, founder of Asta Network and the Starter Lab. Uh, it has been very busy for me. And, uh, we are making a lot of the progress in Japan. Uh, finally, I have concluded some of the deal and it can be announced next month and uh, in July too. Uh, so stay tuned. Yes. So um, mostly we usually do a small introduction, definitely more about founders and also projects, what they are doing, but with our like our views and Austin Network have accomplished nearly there are absolutely no need to control it at all. And and before we get started mm -hmm. with with more insightful question, I will ask a really interesting question coming from myself, Rob. So, you know, mm -hmm. Asta Ran now is really actually a, an empire. So what the story behind the name? Why why Asta and can you share us? with the inspiration sure. for approaching to this name? Name, right? A star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, I had some of the criteria, I mean, requirements to decide the name. The first requirement is easy, right? And everyone can pronounce. Um, and the I wanted to decide a name which is related to universe. So, Easiest, easiest name related to universe everyone can pronounce is Ta, right? Even even people who cannot speak English know Ta, I mean word, right? Yeah. Um, and another requirement is starting from A. Yeah. Because if the name starting start from A, the, you know, our name can be listed at the top in an alphabetical order. So that is, this is the reason why we decided uh, our network as uh, a star. Yeah. But uh, American people pronounce a star and Asian people pronounce a star. Yeah, <laughs> this might be a slight mistake for us, but uh, it should be okay. It is yeah. okay, actually. Yeah, but actually your network is currently a star. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah, a star is born and we would like to make a star. Yeah. So um when we talk about a star, we talk about um smart contract, we talk about multi-chain. So what is the end goals that you and your team want to achieve with these visions? Yeah. So I think that definitely uh what we need what the, this industry need right now is the mass adoption. Yeah. Because technology itself does not change the world, right? If technology is used in the right way and widely used, the technology changes the world, right? Yeah. So we should make the uh, very usable product, not only for dev, but also for general people, like yeah. your grandmother or maybe your grandfather. So this is what we would like to do. So we would like to be the blockchain for mass yeah. adoption. And we would like to onboard billions of the people to Web3 through Astar and through our products. Uh, this is the things we would like to do. But to do so, we do have a multiple problem we have to solve, like scalability, security, privacy, um, you know, and so on. And that's why we are focusing on interoperability, uh, smart contract, uh, multi virtual machine, and developer incentive, and so on. <laughs> so right, right now, a lot of the people are talking about platform, right? Like a protocol. 
But uh, in the long run, people should talk about application. Let's the internet. No one, no one is talking about who created the TCP/IP protocol, who created the you know HTML protocol, and so on. Right? If people are talking about application on the top of internet because application actually changed the user's behavior, and every, everyone is using it. But in terms of Web three and blockchain, uh, the people who are really highlighted in this industry is like giving a little bit like they're in, uh, you know, um, a little bit me <laughs> and so on, right? Yeah. Um, so the people who are making protocol are really highlighted, but uh, eventually this should be changed. So what do we create, what we would like to create is to, that the platform that can, you know, that support killer use cases to achieve yeah. mass adoption. Okay. So, um, like, as you mentioned before that, uh, there, there would be a lot of deals coming from as the network side. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of big enterprising coming to Asta, like Toyota or Sony yeah. or, or, or even Kobe, um, a very, a very famous, um, snack food, yeah. In, manufacturer yes. and and they are eager to join the web3 era so what's the motivation behind um speaking about japanese company the reason is there are multiple reasons right the they think web3 is the frontier of the tech and they see a lot of the potential on web3 but as the mindset what I have and what the decision makers at the Japanese government and the big company has is the 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 following reason. Uh, I think the first one is we completely miss Web two, right? Uh, Japan as a country completely miss Web two. We don't have a Google, we don't have a Microsoft, we don't have a Facebook. We even do not have Alibaba, uh, Tencent, and Line, and so on cacao and so on, right? So as a country, we, we need to create really big product or really big company or really big DAO from Japan to capture the economic growth. So this is what uh, Japan as a country have to do in coming 30 years. Uh, this is the reason why Japanese government made Web3 as a national strategy and a lot of the big company are really interested in because they have a lot of the experiences in a traditional business and they think they miss the web too. Um, yeah, uh, and second reason is yeah. the web three itself has a lot of the potential, right? Let's say NFT. NFT is widely used in Japan and that they think NFT as the tool for you know regional revitalization. So let's say Carby, um, let's say Japan Railway Company, uh, they are creating the use cases in a uh, rural area of Japan, as well as in Tokyo. But by using NFT, we can incentivize people to go to a specific area or purchase specific things, right? Um, so I think Web3 and uh, crypto itself is all about economic design, economic yeah. incentive. So by using NFT, by using Astar, they create a new incentive model for general people. So this is what people are doing in Japan right now. And we would like to be the go-to market chain in Japan, but my, in, in the long run, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make Japanese chain. I would like to make one of the you know, global platform components yeah. to realize Web 3.0. Yeah. So um like talking about NFTs and and, and you, you mentioned that um Kobe launching NFT chips um mm -hmm. and also um and also JR Kyushu Railway they they launched mm -hmm. also launch NFT as well to boost the customer mm -hmm. engagement, right? So so mm -hmm. what so what are your projection of NFT technology in the future that like to compare with other technologies, um, like what, how how the important is it 
um, when you're talking about NFTs and and mm -hmm. what could be all the use cases for NFT in real world utility? Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, I cannot answer a very specific one, but in general, in a big picture, uh, if people are um, caring about technology when they would like to make something, it, it's something wrong, right? Um, in a, people should not think about technology. People should not think about backend when people interact with the technology in a daily life, ideally speaking, right? And when we, when we purchase something, when we pay with the credit card, I don't know the backend. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Visa did behind the screen, right? So this is the things we should do in a Web3 as well. But right now we need to, you know, be careful which blockchain to use and transaction cost, finality, and so on. So we needed to remove technical limitation to realize the other use case that can be used by general people. And the mm -hmm. NFT, speaking about NFT, I think NFT is kind of the CRM system, a customer management system. So let's say in, in case of Calibi, um, if you purchase potato chips and if you eat and make the package smaller and scan with Web3 wallet, NFT will be distributed, right? Yeah. And if you purchase potato chips again and eat again, the this seed of the plant is growing and you can get the potato chips character if you eat five times. Yeah. Then you can prove that loyalty of the Calibi on chain Asta network by having multiple NFTs, right? Uh, from the Calibi's perspective, they are selling potato chips at convenience store, at groceries. Yeah. And then some people are paying with cash. Yeah. So Calibi does not know who purchased potato chips, yeah. right? But uh, by using NFT as a CRM system, customer management system, they can understand which address are actually using eating Calibi goods. And when it comes to Web3, I think Web3 is all about increasing choice. So Calibi knows the address of Asana Network, but Calibi yeah. does not know who they are, right? Yeah, yeah. So if the customer would like to disclose the personal information to get rewarded, they have a choice. The people yeah. have a choice to whether they're going to disclose or not, right? So yeah. this is all about Web3 use case. And if they disclose the information, they can get uh, they can get rewarded by Calibi. Okay. Yeah, this is the use case we created, our ecosystem created. Yeah. So um, actually, when when I repaired a trip for 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 me and you and and I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the the manga and anime market uh, in in Japan, especially when if in if they join the Web3 industry, you know, like according to several reports that, that I researched before, that manga market currently reached around like um, $4.9 billion that that hasn't counted an, the, the anime market yet. And, and all of the people around the world love anime and manga, me as well. And, and they usually buy grocery souvenirs relating to do their favorite anime movies, but it's produced by 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 local fab manufacturer and it's not authentic. So, but mm -hmm. it would be but it would be awesome if fans can can buy souvenir via NFTs when it's officially mm -hmm. launched by by the creator, the owner, right? So, yeah. How how after do you guys have any plan to do something with this opportunity? Yeah, uh, we have a multiple opportunity to talk with the IP holders. And uh, what you said is actually what we would like to do. But, yeah. uh, you know, just issuing NFT is not a use case, no longer a use case right yeah. now, right? 
issue the NFT and use NFT picture as a Twitter's profile or yeah. you know, LinkedIn profile, whatever. This is not a use case. It's not yeah. sustainable. And everybody finally understand this is not sustainable. And that, but the IP holder, they really yeah. care about IP because yeah. IP is really important for them. Yeah. Right? So they do not want to do a unsustainable business. So yeah. they would like to find the sustainable way to collaborate with Web3 business. Mm -hmm. So I think directly, directly uh, meeting IP NFT is not the use case for them. Instead, we would like to create a specific use case. So let's say Feel3, which is uh, move to an application on the top of a star. And then they have a, it's move to an app. So they have a clothes, they have a shoes and so on. So fine. After that, after having use case like Feel3, they can collaborate with IP. So let's say making IP, you know, the, you know, making ghost, ghost in shell uh, clothes or making Pokemon shoes and so on, right? Yeah. So we should have a use case first and then IP collaboration. We should not have, you know, NFT IP. Yeah, yeah right? So right, right. I would like to make more NFT use cases first to collaborate with the IP company. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got it. So so this this next question would be very interesting that we saw a huge role of Web3, of course, and, and we saw, we also saw a huge role of AI use cases in real life. And, and people told that AI is, is taking over the spotlight of Web3 recently. But I still see like a compromise here, right? With several Web3 projects apply AI into their core features. And especially I saw Aster Network apply ChatGPT as an AI assistant as well. So uh, how do you see the potential of this cooperation in, in current state and also in the future? Yeah, uh, speaking about AI, I think we should use AI for a specific purpose wisely. So let's say community management. Uh, we got the same question multiple times, every day, every day, every day, right? Mm -hmm. Then we can automate the answer by ourselves. And mm -hmm. we created AI chatbot for Asta Network already and it is already deployed uh this is the one thing and another thing is the integrating ai to specific nft use case or specific DeFi use case but uh it it actually takes time yeah. so we are carefully considering that and uh speaking about web3 i think you know was, ai is kind of buzzword right now we should definitely use it but uh I'm I'm considering the the next big Web three use case that can bring huge impact, just like ChatGPT. So ChatGPT changed the game, right, of the AI, and they created a huge impact. But I think in the Web three, within two years or within three years, we're gonna have a next big things, just like yeah. ChatGPT. GPT. So. I'm considering that kind of the use case in a Web3 domain because we would like to be, we would like to win in a competition. And a lot of the people actually uh, goes to uh, the AI after AI became popular, after AI mm -hmm. make buzz. A lot of the people comes to, uh, goes to uh, AI, right? But this is the wrong approach. The true winner create the buzz. The loser goes to buzz, right? So to, yeah. to win, to make a huge impact, we should really consider how to make buzz rather than how to, you know, rather than going to buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, next question is that uh, we, we all want month adoptions coming to web trees. So it needs to be like to be applied by more and, and more big enterprises because it brings use cases and, and real products to end user. But it's not like it's not an easy path, right? So what 
how, what do you think that what are the biggest barriers and challenges that we need to confirm to reach uh, this goal? Sorry, so, challenge I, for the mass adoption, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, like, what are the big barriers that that hinder the 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 the, the mass adoption of Web three to real user? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not related to Asta and Polkadot, but uh, uh, my view is the lack of the vertical provider in a Web three space. Yeah. What I said is the blockchain, Web3 has multiple layers, starting from layer zero, layer one, yeah. uh, sometimes layer two, uh, node management, index, uh, wallet, application. So we okay. do have a horizontal specialist, like Asta, Polkadot, Ethereum, uh, Blockdemon, Alchemy, Metamask, Axie, Stepan, whatever, right? We do have a horizontal specialist. But we don't have any vertical specialist. So there is no company, maybe except for consensus, who provide all the vertical layer, starting from layer one to application. So because of the lack of the vertical company, if you created a specific application, it is very difficult to change the bottom layer, like layer one, node management, indexer, and, and so on. It takes long time to create specific API yeah. or specific specific you know, uh, infrastructure. So my approach as a starter lab, which is the for-profit company, is to create particular toolings. So we have a layer one already, yeah. and we are going to create node management, we are going to create indexer, we are going to create a wallet for Astar, and then mm -hmm. we can finally make application on the top of it. And then, you know, our application is more flexible than others because we have all things vertically. I think this is the, this is missing in uh, okay. Web3 world in general. Okay. Okay. Got, got it. Like you will have um, more, more things as well coming to Asta, like especially your Asta on wallet room. All right. Wow. It's, it's, it's awesome. So yeah. um, in the long yeah. run. Yeah. So so before we before we say goodbye, like, what's your advice to young generation who want to join Web three industry? Uh, comment for the young generation. Yeah. Uh, we are we are still young, but uh, <laughs> comment for younger generation. Um, I think Web three has very huge potential, and what I yeah. like is the we can be the people who can actually make progresses of technologies. Let's yeah. say internet. Internet was born 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and it was commercialized uh, 30 years ago or something like, like that, right? So I personally did not have a choice, did not have an yeah. opportunity to be involved in this revolution. I also missed mobile, I mean like iPhone, because I was a high school student. So Web3 is just started. You know, at least at least um, fifteen years after two thousand eight Bitcoin, so there is no people or person who has been doing Web three uh, blockchain for more than fifteen years. So this is the huge opportunity for young people to be the frontier of the technical innovation. This is what I like. And second thing is Web3 is global from day one. Yeah. So you are no longer restricted in terms of geological location. So you can make global product regardless where you are. You may be in a, you know, Asia, you may be in US, you may be in Europe, whatever, but you can make global project from day one. So this also brings huge opportunity for young generation. Yeah. So um, to make the long story short, uh, Web3 is the next frontier of the technology. Uh, if you are young and if you are passionate and if you have a time, uh, I think Web3 is definitely one of the best domain. You need to be careful.
Yeah. Yeah, just perfect. Um, so I'm so grateful that you joined with me today. And if the community want to learn more about Soda One and and also Ask the Network, I will drop some link below that you can find anything about. So see you guys on the next interview and thank you again, uh, Soda. Yeah. Yep.